Oh, China is on the brink of a COVID-19 storm, possibly the largest since the pandemic started three years ago. It's estimated the country is experiencing at least 1 million infections and 5,000 deaths every day. The numbers come from research firm Airfinity, which has been tracking the pandemic since it first emerged. Some Chinese cities have been handing out free anti-fever drugs as waves of infections sweep through hospitals. The country's abrupt U-turn in its zero-COVID policy earlier this month has caught the healthcare system unprepared. And now medical workers are bracing for a battle. Patients crowd the corridors of Beijing's Chaoyang Hospital. The facility is seeing around 400 patients daily, 10 times more than the beginning of this month. Many of them are elderly with fever symptoms on top of pre-existing conditions. Doctors say some are in serious condition. As more residents seek medical help, Beijing authorities are asking hospitals to set up makeshift clinics in stadiums. They are catered to treat young and elderly patients without background diseases. Fever is plaguing many people as COVID-19 spreads, and cities are responding by giving out millions of ibuprofen tablets to medical institutions. Some pharmacies are providing up to 10 tablets a day to residents who present an ID card. But there are concerns that the virus is killing more people than reported. Authorities report no new COVID deaths, but funeral parlor workers say demand has jumped in the past week. Witnesses in Beijing claim at least 40 hearses were queuing to enter a crematorium. And for more on the COVID-19 situation in China, CNN's Le Vixiong joins us live from Chongqing. Le Vixiong, why does it seem China is unprepared for this surge in infections? Well, we, so we have to point out that a surge in infections is expected, as we have seen uh, in the experience of other countries, as they have transited uh, from to living with the virus. And uh, this is what we are seeing in China. However, the question is whether China had been prepared for this, given what we are seeing on the ground. Today, a hospital in Shanghai posted an article on his WeChat account telling his staff to be prepared for a, quote, a tragic battle as it expects 12.5 million people in the city, that's half of the city's population, to be infected with the virus by the end of the year. Now, several experts I've spoken to have pointed to several reasons as to why we are seeing what we are seeing. One of it is due to risk communication, as until recently, people who had been infected with the virus had been sent to hospitals or to some sort of healthcare facility. And now, as more are being infected, more are uh, showing up at the hospitals and fever clinics in search of medicine, uh, even though they may have milder symptoms, putting pressure on the healthcare system. Another factor has been that the opening up seen in China has been a top-down approach, and local governments have been left to implement guidelines guidelines that have been uh, ordered by the central authorities. And after three years of the pandemic, resources have been stretched thin. The timing also is not great, given that there have been disruptions in supply chains, including in the healthcare sector, as some experts tell me. Also, as the seasonal flu is going around and that is continuing to put pressure on the healthcare system. But uh, another expert also pointed out that perhaps China had not been prepared been prepared for the end of a zero COVID policy. And we had seen in the rhetoric that it viewed this as a sustainable approach. But uh, we have to remember that this relaxation of its measures had come after we had seen a continued rise in infections in spite of the strict measures. And also, as we had seen those protests in various parts of the city against the zero COVID policy. So uh, some analysts are telling me that this was perhaps more of a decision uh, being made to address economic fallout from the zero COVID policy without taking the health considerations so much uh, into concern. Olivia, uh, we heard earlier in the report before we crossed to you uh, concerns about uh, the numbers, about deaths, possibly more than what we're hearing officially. Another issue raised by the World Health Organization, uh, the lack of data from the country. What is the concern here? 
Well, the concern from the WHO is very simple. Without this data, it's unable to make a comprehensive assessment uh, of the situation in China. Also, with regard to the number of deaths, uh, the death toll here in China being seen as lower than what many of the countries uh, have reported. Experts I've spoken to also believe that the deaths uh, in the country are more than what's being reported, especially as we've seen uh, reports uh, um, reports uh, from uh, various media outlets uh, that, uh, you know, funeral parlors are busy and uh, they are reporting more deaths of their relatives as well. Oh, thanks so much for that. CNN so even in Singapore, we did uh, deaths that were attributable to COVID, not associated with it. So, for instance, if you die in a, in a car accident, but you have COVID, clearly that would not be attributable. Uh, if you have uh, a, a sort of a, an acute pneumonia uh, and that's COVID and it's a pure respiratory death, then obviously that's clearly uh, causative. But then you get uh, a little bit of blurring because there could be a, a minor respiratory illness that sparks a heart attack. Is that a COVID death uh, or not? And that's where uh, some countries have varied. Uh, I think personally, China's uh, definition does seem quite narrow if they're not going to uh, uh, regard pre-existing illnesses as, as significant because it's obviously pre-existing lung illness would make you very prone to, to dying from COVID. So uh, whether they're going to count those people or not, I'm not sure. Now, Professor Fisher, they're talking about the questions that have been raised about how China classifies COVID deaths as uh, health authorities here have said that only those who die of respiratory failure or pneumonia are being considered COVID deaths and those with underlying illnesses uh, are not being classified as such. And that has led to questions about China's death toll with the projected number of deaths uh, in some studies being expected to be at over a million next year. Oh, thanks. That's CNN's Oliver Xiong that speak to us live from Chongqing.